Rub up your engines! Today I'm gonna to talk about a good, cheap work truck. This is an 81 F100. Even though it says F150, somebody just stuck that on as a laugh. Now when I say cheap, I mean really cheap. The owner just bought this for $2. Yes, $2, and it runs. Now granted, he bought it from his father, who bought it from his grandfather, and the grandfather did pay a whopping $300 for it ages ago. It had been sitting in a field for years, but he got it running and drove it home. Now the reason I say it's a good cheap work truck is under the hood, because under the hood is a 300 cubic inch straight six cylinder Ford engine. Now they're not insane horsepower, they go anywhere from about 100 to 175 horsepower, but they got a lot of low end torque for pulling stuff. So much so that Ford actually put them in dump trucks. You see them in all kinds of things, wood chippers, dump trucks, you name it. Well, this one is an F100 truck that it came with in 1981. And check it out. It's a typical rolling 300 straight six. They got a little roll to them, but they can run for Ever. And everything under her is simplicity itself. A simple old carburetor. A very simple carburetor. There's the fuel filter. And an electric automatic choke. This one works perfectly fine, but if it ever does go out, you can easily rebuild them. Or heck, you can still get them from AutoZone. <laughs> Now let's say you wanted to upgrade the carburetor. For about 280 bucks, you could put a brand new Edelbrock on that. Work much better than the original one. You get more horsepower out of it too. You can do whatever you want with one of these old trucks. And strangely enough, the air conditioner still works on this old thing. And as you can see, pretty much everything is simple. There we have mechanical fuel pump. Bolts on with two bolts. A distributor system, it can easily be repaired, and this is one of my favorites. Don't you hate it with newer cars when, well, your regulator's broken, but that's built into the alternator, so you gotta replace the whole alternator. Well, not in these old things. Here's the alternator, but here's the regulator over here. You can replace just the regulator if you have to. It's a separate piece. As we go inside, we can see it's old. We know that, it's an 81. And what do we have here? There's a bungee cord. Now why is there a bungee cord holding the shifter up? Well, there's a story behind that. It was sitting running in a garage with the trailer on the back. Without the bungee cord, it slipped into reverse gear by itself. As you can see, the bungee cord holds it up, so that won't happen. Because when it had the trailer on the back and it was inside and it slipped in reverse, this is what happened. The trailer jackknifed and smashed it in. But oddly enough, it didn't even break the tail light, so it comes pre-dented. Well, I guess you expect dents for a $2 truck, but check this out. This 81's got the long bed, it just keeps going. You can throw a lot of junk in this baby. And because of that 300 cubic inch straight six, you can actually tow quite a bit. Now, you're not supposed to do this, but of course, for the $2 truck, who would care? I got a friend with one, he towed a 14,000 pound load behind him with this thing. It's not rated for that. And he said, uh, it was better going downhill and I like it when the wind was pushing from the back, <laughs> but the engine has the torque in order to pull that. And as you can see when we look under, the old frame, still solid as can be. They built these things back in the day. You can see it's even got dual exhaust, one on each side, a lot of rigging here, welding stuff on, but hey, it holds up. Now you might think this truck is old, but it's actually the seventh generation of the Ford pickup trucks. And it does have a four-speed automatic transmission that's actually quite reliable. And since this is the classic pickup truck, it's not four-wheel drive, it's just driving the rear. It's a classic pickup truck with a big old differential in the back. Solid, reliable. But really, when you slam the hood, it's still a pretty sharp looking truck. I do have to say, this is two dollars well spent. Or even in his grandfather's day, when he bought it for three hundred dollars. That's still a pretty good deal. As we go back inside, yeah, it's got an aftermarket radio. They didn't come with these fancy Panasonics. But check this out. Needs fan belts, but check it out. The power windows still work. Now they go down a lot faster than they go back up. But they do still go back up slowly but surely. And really, just listen to that engine. Hey, 
this thing's already gone at least 150,000 miles. Because in the old days, the speedometers only went to 99,999, then they go back to zero. So it's got either 150 or 250,000 on it. And yeah, when you put it in drive, it shakes a little bit. You get a little vibration here or there. You can feel the cab shaking somewhat. But really, it's a pan ultimate work truck. You don't care what happens to it. As previously mentioned, it comes pre-dinged from the trailer swinging along. It also came with junk already in the trunk, or the bed, I should say. And the wheels and rims are certainly worth the $2 price. And it's something no modern pickup truck has, the class of being an old Ford pickup truck that's still rolling down the road. You can't buy that. At least you can in any new truck. This was bought for $2. <laughs> And at least from this side, it didn't get crunched in when the trailer jackknifed when it backed up by itself, pre-bungee cord. It looks pretty good. So if you're looking for a good, cheap work truck, don't poo-poo an 80s Ford. And check it out. This one even came with the 80s sunglasses in the bed as a bonus. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Marcus Deed said, good morning, Scotty. I got a 99 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am LSI 1, 160K. How reliable, difficult would it make it to be a daily driver? That's got an LS1 engine. People probably ragged the heck out of it. I'm sure you're not the original owner, but it's a strong engine. And if the transmission has been taken care of and it still goes, you could use it as an everyday driver. The problem is, if it's been beaten to heck, it might need a transmission overhaul. And if the engine is now rattling or burning, burns oil, it's eventually going to need to be rebuilt. It costs you a lot of money to rebuild it. But if you wanted to, and you did fix it up, let's say the body's not all rotten, and you want to put money into it, it could be very reliable. But, and this is a real big thing, realize those Firebirds, those are all unibody construction. They have no actual frame. If you go under there, and all that unibody frame is all rusted away, don't put any money into it, because it's worth nothing. It's rotting away, and those things are notorious for rotting away. If it's rotting away, drive it as it is. If something goes wrong, then just jump. It. Don't try to fix it if the frame is rotting away. James Self said, Scotty, what is cylinder deactivation on new V8s? Okay, well, these idiotic engineers come with the idea. We got these V8 engines, but they have computer systems that can turn off cylinders to get better gas mods. So when you don't need much power, it can run on six instead of eight or even four cylinders instead of eight. But there's a real drawback to that. And as we mechanics have found out, if you do have a system like that, it turns out that the cylinders that are deactivated end up having problems later on lack of lubrication, lack of something, and they wear out faster than the other cylinders, so the engines are actually wearing out faster too. It's a stupid idea. You know, you want a gas mod, get a four-cylinder engine. Don't get an eight and turn half of them off. They've been doing that stuff for ages. They used to have mechanical ones, and they were crap. The newer ones are more computer electronically. They still have mechanical parts to them, but they're controlled by computers, and they're garbage too. Uh, most people that have them in the V8s and GMs, they get a delete system. They put it in so it doesn't turn itself on anymore because I can't stand it, and I don't blame them. Carzozo Manual 027 says, Scotty, I got an 03 Explorer that recently had the oil pump fixed. It says 145,000 miles. Can I sell it? Can last me a while. It's a V8 4x4. Keep it. Those V8s were the best Explorers they ever made. The six-cylinder ones, they were okay. Some of them were clunkers. Some of them lasted long, but those V8 engines could last forever. I've had customers with 350,000 miles on them. Keep it. They'll never make them that well built again. Keep it up. Take care of it, and if you get tired of it, you'll be able to sell it for a decent amount of money because everybody's looking for the V8 4x4s. They may even be coming a collector's item. You never know. But the V8 engines were strong. The transmissions were strong. And yeah, they're a little bit gas hoggy, but people that want 4x4s don't care about gas mods. They're not worried about that kind of stuff. Memes on my left says, I got an 07 Nissan Murano, 202,000 kilometers. It vibrates when you step on the gas. Ease on the gas, it gets better. Doesn't matter if it's in gear, drive shaft, and all mounts are good. Okay. It vibrates when you step on the gas. The odds are your transmission transmission starting to go out. Those have those crappy Jatco automatic transmissions. When you step on the gas, you're straining the transmission. It will vibrate, but then when you ease up, it stops vibrating because there's less torque. I see that all the time on those. I mean, it's unfortunate, but Nissan makes crappy automatic transmissions, and they have for quite some time. If you get a deal, especially if you're going uphill and you're accelerating and it really shakes, I guarantee it's the transmission starting to go out. I see that all the time in those models. So I tell people not to buy them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.